Uh, we thwarted a diabolical plot to kill many churchgoers yesterday in Haymarket, Prince William County, Virginia. An armed gunman bent on taking many lives in a church in Virginia was stopped in the nick of time. This man right here is accused of making threats to a church in Prince William County. Then police say he was caught armed with weapons at that same church. Our Katie Lusso is live where the arrest happened at a park at Park Valley Church in Haymarket with new details on how police caught this suspect. Katie. Yeah, and really a crazy story here. What led up to all of this was a call from someone who saw the threats on social media. Well, then what we saw was teamwork between three different law enforcement agencies across two states. Well, tonight, police tell us that we were just minutes, seconds away from being out here telling a very different story. Guys, that lives were saved, period. Indeed, this could have been one of the worst mass shootings at a church. In a church with over 1,000 worshipers, there would have been mass casualties if the gunman had succeeded in carrying out his demonic plan. We thank God for using everyone involved, including the cops and the person who reported the suspect to the police, to save countless lives. Right now I'm inside Park Valley Church. This is where Pastor Barry White stands on this stage right here and preaches to his congregation. Look at all of these seats. 1,300 people fill this church on Sunday morning. That's exactly how many people were here when this alleged mass shooting could have happened. Well, people who sit in these pews are tonight thanking God that Fairfax County Police, Anne Arundel County Police, Prince William County Police worked together to stop what could have happened at this church. Police arrested the suspect at the entrance. And tonight, the pastor is thanking God that the suspect wasn't able to come in here and hurt people. Unquestionably, Rui Jiang, the 35-year-old man arrested for threats against Park Valley Church, planned to take many lives. He visited the church many times and posted his intention to attack the church on his social media account. Thank God that someone spotted the threats and called the police. He was apprehended in these doors here. Sources tell us it was his social media account, this one that set off the initial alarms. His posts, a video that he writes is a Bible burning, various photos of Park Valley Church. One caption he writes, I worked for the government for 11 years. Another he writes, welcome to Park Valley Church, attended by many top secret government clearance holders. Others show him pointing a gun at a screen with a church on it, writing, my loyalty was never appreciated. He believed that a lot of government employees attended here. Around 740 Sunday morning, Anne Arundel County PD got a call about the threatening posts and immediately they contacted Fairfax County Police who rushed to his home at Skyline Towers in Bailey's Crossroads but found no sign of him. Around 10 a.m. Prince William County Police found him at the church in Haymarket and he was taken into custody. We don't even want to imagine what could have happened. Police say after getting a warrant for his home, we found a kill manifesto. Pastor Barry White says they are beyond grateful not only to police but to the person who saw something and said something. I can't thank them enough for their courage. To Zhang, we love everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. Our hope is that he gets the help that he needs. Tonight, grateful that they get to celebrate their 20th anniversary this weekend. And for 20 years, God has protected us. And this is an example of that in HD. So uh, one of a, a really bright lieutenant for Fairfax County immediately contacted Prince William County. Uh, they responded to the church uh, right away. In fact, they had a police officer, a Prince William County police officer who was working secondary employment at the church, so he was there already. Uh, they identified the person of interest, uh, made contact with him, and I believe the vestibule of the church, uh, the congregation, my understanding is, was already had already made their way into the church for the Sunday service. Uh, they identified him, approached him, and recovered from his person a loaded uh, semi-automatic pistol with an additional magazine. Um, we went to work immediately with Prince William County. It's their case, and it was their criminal charges that resulted in this person, um, Rui Jing, being held on a no-bond status in Prince William County. While we're thankful for God's protection, we're equally saddened that no place is safe anymore in America. The church should be a safe place for people to gather and worship God without worrying about their lives being in danger. This goes to show how our nation has fallen. Rui Jiang had a manifesto, which hasn't been made public, but based on what the Fairfax police chief shared, Rui Jiang had the evil intention of taking many lives. Uh, but we executed a search warrant at his residence in 
in Fairfax County and found a kill manifesto, uh, the likes of which I've never read. Uh, it's disturbing. Uh, it now sits as a piece of evidence in what will immediately be a local prosecution, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the FBI and, and other federal law enforcement agencies and our U.S. Attorney's Office uh, weren't interested in adopting this case. And, and you know, by the time his, his kill manifesto becomes public down the road, I, I think you'll all see that he had, he had means, he had intent, and uh, he spent some time at that church earlier in the morning before he went back to his Bailey Crossroads residence and then went back to the church. So he staked it out. He told us in writing what he intended to do. He was armed. Uh, he arrived at the church uh, with, with, with a mission. And, 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 and the good guys prevailed this time around. We, we captured him before he was able to, to take many, many lives, in my opinion. At the church? At the church. The, vest, the vestibule of the church. How do you believe And I believe that, that uh, Rui Jing was absolutely both homicidal yesterday and suicidal and we put our hands on them literally in the nick of time sir you, yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned you've read the manifesto i know some of this stuff defies logic it defies rationale but from what you've seen uh any explanation for why this church why was he targeting this particular yeah i, I have to be careful not to characterize uh the, the manifesto because it, it's, it is being treated as evidence and it, it will either be prosecuted locally or federally. But, but I did read it. It's, it's a very detailed one-page manifesto that very um, systematically and logically identifies his grievance with the government, and identifies his intent to harm and kill, and identifies his, his own desire to end his life. It was, it was eerie. Any explanation for why that church, out of all places, I, again, I know you can't really. Yeah, he, he made some references in, in his, you know, Kill Manifesto about why he selected that church. Uh, but he also articulated that he didn't know anyone at that church. He articulated that his would-be victims, and, and he put it out there. He knew he was going to take many lives yesterday, and he also said that I don't know any of them. So... Um, it was, it was one of the eeriest things I've ever read. Instead of our thoughts and prayers are with the victims' families, we are giving all the glory and honor to God for sparing many lives. Sadly, evil things do happen because we live in a sin-cursed world. In March 2023, six people, including three school children, died when an individual attacked a Christian school. As our society becomes more godless, we see an increase in violence. When people have a fear of God and know that they are accountable to Him for their actions, they are more likely to not engage in activities that will result in hurting another person or taking their lives. Before 1963, there was no incident of mass murder in a church. But we can't say the same today. A deadly shooting last June inside an historic black church in Charleston, South Carolina. Nine people, including the pastor, were shot to death during a Bible study session. We begin with those disturbing attacks on religious services. First, the breaking news from Texas, a gunman opening fire inside a church near Fort Worth. This morning, police want to know why a gunman stormed a church potluck dinner before opening fire on the crowd. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Tom Yamas in New York. We interrupt regularly scheduled programming to bring you breaking news out of Texas where there has been a church shooting. County commissioners in the area tell ABC News that they're getting reports from the scene of 20 to 24 people dead. When you look at the data from LifeWay Research, it is clear that church shootings have steadily increased. A church was once considered a haven of peace and solemnity, but has now become a target for hostility. As uncomfortable as it sounds, churches must have security measures to prevent or minimize the impact of mass shootings. This is an active shooter training session for representatives of more than a dozen central Ohio churches. The world that we live in today requires security of some sort. Dwayne King is the head of security at Vineyard Christian Church. Anything can happen within our society today, especially in an active shooter situation. Where 
in the past, when you mentioned guns in the church, they're like, oh no, we don't want any part of that. Pastors are waking up now. Detective Wilson is a Columbus police officer who helps lead training sessions for the FOP Bridging the Gap program. He says the harsh reality of active shooters inside churches requires an exit plan and a plan to shoot back. The carnage doesn't stop until good guys with guns show up. Typically, when we get there, three minutes, could be five minutes, could be two. But when we get there, how much carnage can happen? How many deaths in three minutes? Someone there has to have the ability to stop it. That's what we want to teach. The fact that this type of precaution is now necessary is so disheartening, yet a reminder of the world we live in today. First of all, I don't believe that anything happens by accident. Um, I believe that God's timing is always perfect. I mean, if I was in charge, obviously I would not have had what happened last weekend at all, let alone right before the 20th anniversary. Uh, but again, God's in control, and for 20 years we've witnessed that, you know. <clears throat> for 20 years we've witnessed the fact that God has protected this ministry in incredible ways. And last weekend, he did that probably in the most powerful way ever. As a matter of fact, it was so powerful, the entire nation now knows about it. Um, I'm so glad that the services went on anyway because last weekend at Haymarket, we had 14 people give their lives to Jesus Christ. So, but we saw the miraculous hand of God in so many different ways because uh, we, there was a, a person over in Anne Arundel uh, County, Maryland, that saw some posts and, and as a result of it saw something, said something, which was amazing. And so this person said something to Anne Arundel County Police. Anne Arundel County Police called Fairfax County. They did a wellness check on the person involved. The person was not there. So they're thinking, this isn't good. Something maybe is happening right now at this very moment. So they reached out to Prince William County. And it was interesting how they did it. They didn't do it internally. Basically, one of the officers on his cell phone, I believe it was a he, I don't know if it was a he or she, called uh, Prince William County dispatch and said, hey, we have a problem. You have to believe me that I am who I say I am and that there is an issue going on right now. And God worked. It was amazing how God worked. Um, Prince William County knew that there was a police officer that had a very close relationship with Park Valley. They called him on his cell phone. He said this, I'm in the lobby right now. And he wasn't even going to be at church that morning, but he felt led to be here. God wanted him here. And so from that point on, he went out and started to look for the uh, suspect's car. And while he was doing that, the suspect was walking in the building. Okay, so came in the north entrance, our security, not knowing anything, he had taken two steps into the building and they knew right away that the man was a threat. So they started following all the protocols, going through all the protocols and uh, came into the auditorium, Let's just say they were following protocols. I'm not supposed to say everything that was going on, but they're doing what they, were, what they do and on our security team. Uh, he went in a door he shouldn't have gone into. He was contacted, confronted. He went out of that area, came down the stairs, went out into the lobby, went into the bathroom, came out of the bathroom, and that's when we made contact with uh, Mr. Jang. And um, so one of our security people kind of backed out of the situation, went to the officer and said, Hey, would you help us? We have, while he's saying this, he's looking at the police officer's computer. There's a picture of the man that they just made contact with. And he said, we're talking to that man right now. And the police officer came in, took the situation outside, arrested the man. And as a result of it, we just see the hand of God in every way, shape, and form. We also want you to know that we're praying for Mr. Zhang. We're praying for him. You know what? We want him to get the help he needs. You know, we want him to heal. We want him to know Christ. And Satan uses people to do things, but they have souls and they need Christ. So, but um, I'm just so thankful for the way that God took what could have been a tragedy and made it a victory. We're celebrating today. This is a victory. So praise God for that. If people are no longer safe in a church or school, where else can they be safe? More than ever, unbelievers need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because it has the power to soften dark hearts and save sinners from their sins. The days are evil. Apart from Jesus, there is no hope for humanity. May the Lord protect us from the powers of darkness. Amen. Please help us spread biblical truth. 
subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.